Hi, I'm one of the judges, Eleanor Zopi, representing product and technology here at T-Mobile. And I'm really excited to present the award for zero to 60. Um, the judges loved the new take on the GUI and the, 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 the visual effect. We thought it was very, very creative, very, very artistic. And it's something we hadn't seen before. So I'm really excited to present the winner for zero to 60. And that was Aquatail. So congratulations. We loved the submission. Really super cool. Hi, my name is Gavin Foyer, and I'm one of the judges for today's Virtual Code Day event. At T-Mobile, I'm a Senior Manager of Product Management. I'm here to present the Best Game Mechanics Award. This award today is going to a game that was really thought out well out and has a lot of really good game mechanics. This is going to Ignotum Mondus. Congrats! Hello, this is my submission for the 2021 Winter Code Day. In my game, I have custom coded a um, company generator along with an AI for them that can react based on your actions or the actions of other companies. I've also custom coded this display here, the animation on the um, cursor thing, the ability to colonize or mine planets, a working crafting system, and the ability to sell objects at the market. These colonies also give you more resources over time. All of this is custom coded. The only not custom coded stuff is and um, the buttons and drop downs which are part of Unity themselves. There are some errors where when you expand stuff it doesn't go well, but other than that this all works really smoothly. And these planets and solar systems are actually all custom generated at runtime using code I have created. There, it, I have also done all the art and come up for the strategies on how you win. Um, as you can see, one of these companies has actually run out of money. Um, yeah, and like, other than the fact I used to get aim engine that has some pre built stuff, this is all custom made by me. And it was pretty hard. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ray Stone and I'm one of the judges for Virtual Code Day. I'm a senior manager in the PMO at T-Mobile and I'm here to present the winners of the Bravery in the Face of Danger Award. The judges really liked how this project team took risks using machine learning for the first time and created their application. And for that reason, I'm presenting the Bravery in the Face of Danger Award to Chromos. Congrats to the team. Hello. Our project was named Chroma, and it was a machine learning based model to colorize black and white images. So if you had an old image of family members that were maybe black and white, you could send it into this model and it would colorize it and you could see the colors of it. So it uses the lab color space, which is kind of like another color space besides RGB. So the L stands for the lightness or like the grayscale of the image. 
and then the AB are the colors of the image. And you put them together to make a full lab image, which you can see in color. And then how does the model work? It uses, it uses the L part of the lab color space as an input layer and it outputs the AB part, which is the color. So here's the code for our model. See, we use the inception rest net to, to take out higher level features of the image. And then we can pass those features into our model as an input for the encoder. So we use an encoder, a fusion layer, and a decoder style of architecture. So we pass in the inceptions, inception ResNet embedding into the encoder. Then it, it uses convolutional neural networks in this. Then it gets passed to the fusion layer. Then the decoder also uses convolutional neural networks and upscaling 2D layers to upscale the image. And then you eventually get your output. So you can see a prediction that we had. It's in this. So fortunately the model did stop training halfway through. So as you can see, our, our prediction is not very good. It's, there's a lot of noise in it. It's a lot of colors that don't make sense. But yeah, I feel like this could be improved upon if it had more time to train and maybe more data and things like that. So yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Madhushri Mova. I'm one of the principal product managers at T-Mobile. I'm here today to present the Green Earth Award. This award goes to the Earth Turner team. The judges really like the rotational aspect of the game. Congratulations. And thank you for participating in Code Day. Hi, my name is Preston. Um, I'm a software engineer at T-Mobile, and I'm here with my trusty companion, Brutus, who just can't wait to announce our next award. Uh, this one goes out to a team that we felt really embodied the spirit of Code Day. Uh, there were a couple of eighth graders who built a game using Pygame, and all of them had either no experience or very little experience in the framework in the first place. Uh, yet they still ended up building a very fun and complete polished looking game. So without further ado, it is my honor to introduce the John Peters Choice Award to, drum roll Brutus, <sighs> Space Escape. Congratulations team, you guys, you guys deserved it. Good job. Hello everyone. For Code Day, my group and I created a game called Space Escape. We'll walk through it right now. When you begin, it opens up the home screen. On the home screen, you have the title, the play button, and a help button. When you open up the help button, there are instructions for those who are unfamiliar with the game or need, to or need to understand the controls. Then you can return to the menu and finally play your game. In the game, you are an astronaut who is stranded on an unknown planet. The theme is Into the Unknown, which is exactly the premise of our game. You, the player, have to survive as long as possible in a completely unfamiliar terrain on an unknown planet. To do this, you must do two things. First, you have to avoid the explosions when the asteroids hit the ground by controlling the character with the arrow keys. Second, you have to use the space bar to shoot incoming aliens before they can touch you. Both the asteroids and aliens are generated infinitely in random locations, and the aliens each have a different speed and come from multiple directions. The asteroids also have different speeds. We did all of this in Pi Game, much of the documentation of which we learned very recently or during Code Day. None of us were experienced in Pi Game, as we are just middle schoolers, so it was a great learning experience. Anyways, back to the game. As you can see, the score has been increasing as you stay alive for longer. If you die by being caught in an explosion or hitting an alien, 
You are taken to a screen displaying your score and a button that gives you the option to play again. We hope you enjoyed our game and thank you for listening. Hello, I'm Sridhar Panatala, one of the judges for Virtual Code Day. I manage payments for T-Mobile, been doing it for the last four years. I am here to announce one of the special prizes for the most usable app. We got together today and reviewed many things and this one particular app stood out as one of the applicable for the time and usable app. And I really love how simple it is, how versatile with class platform and how useful it is with the information it can provide. And I am certainly going to use. For that reason, I'm here to announce most usable app to with query wing squad team congratulations My name is Saujanya Rao and I'm one of the judges for the Virtual Code Day. I'm a systems analyst at T-Mobile and share the excitement with all my colleagues and volunteers to have this opportunity to watch all the amazing talent today. I would like to present the winners of Nothing to Something category award to the team Pokemon Masters. We really liked how this project turned out to be a cool presentation, particularly for your age. As beginners, your team did a great job assigning roles in the project and explaining all the planning efforts. I hope you continue to develop your passion. Good job and congratulations again. So this is the our Pokemon Masters game that we created. And um, first, um, this is our logo. Um, this is how we created the game. So this we're gonna I'm gonna show you the game plans, but first. Our team leader was, I was the team leader, and my name is Atarva, and I'm in third grade. I'm, I'm the lead supporter. I'm in second grade, and I'm seven years old. And my name is Phil. My name is Anshuman Bharti, and I'm the lead designer, and I'm in second So the planning for the game was, First, I drew what we needed for my first idea for the game. I drew what we needed, two Pokemon characters, sprites, one Pokemon field backdrop, a background, and five Pokemon attacks, and two players. We started with the plan to create a strike game, but then we changed to this one that I just told. And that was a strike game. And then, but it didn't work out. So we thought we would make do a Pokemon chase game with levels. This was Ash and these dots were Pokemon that he was gonna chase. But we couldn't make all the levels after the try. So our, the final version of our game was this. So the the game is um this is Ash and this is a Pokemon Rayquaza and they're in outer space and Rayquaza is in outer space and these are planets Saturn Earth Mars and the Sun they're, and they're in outer space and the the game is that um Ash has to try to move around using the arrow keys and he has to try to come to Rayquaza and he has to try to get to him and hover over him. And then if he hovers over him when the game starts, then he gets 10 points. But it's not that easy because Rayquaza goes, um, will fly super fast when the game starts. And plus these planets, they're gonna be the obstacles in this game. And if you run into the planets, then when the game starts, when you, if you run into the planet, so then you're going to get minus Rayquaza power points. This is Preston, and I'm a software engineer at T-Mobile. 
So a lot of the time when a project looks really polished and complete, it usually means that there were a lot of hands on deck to help with animations, music, code, and design. Uh, and if you don't have any team members, that means the responsibility to do everything kind of falls on you. And it's really hard to just get everything right. Uh, so we came up with an award for an individual who built a very complete and polished looking game entirely on their own. So I would like to announce that the One Person Army Award goes to... Nico V from Extronaut. Congratulations, Nico. You've, you've earned this one. Hi, my name is Xu Meng Zhang, and I'm one of the judges for the Virtual Code Day. I'm a data scientist at the LexisNexis Risk Solutions Incorporation, and here to present the winners of the special prize, Organic Garden Award. The judges really liked how this project was designed and is used for focus and productivity. And for that reason, I'm presenting the Organic Garden Award to the Pomodoro Technique. Congratulations! This is our project, the Pomodoro Timer. The way it works is you take a 25 minute work session and a five minute break. You repeat it four times and take a 25 minute break. And the way we made it is so when you press work, the 25 minute countdown shows, you can press start and the countdown goes off. You can press stop and it goes away. And if you press like short break, you get five minutes and long break, you get 25 minutes. And you can also, when you start it, you can pause it so the countdown just stops and you just resume it. And it works again. And we built it with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And the HTML is the fonts, the CSS or buttons, and JavaScript is the countdown and the click events of the buttons. And that's it. Hi everyone, I'm one of the judges, Eleanor Zopi, and I'm from Product and Technology with T-Mobile. And today I get to announce the winner of Spirit of Code Day. And all of the judges felt that this was a really relevant theme for today. We loved the idea behind it. We loved the idea of being able to find yourself. And with that said, the winner of the Spirit of Code Day is Self, a lost image. Great job. Congratulations. Self, a lost image is a fast-paced boss fight where you'll have to think on your feet in order to come to terms with your true self. You have one minute to dodge spike traps, deceptive platforms, and your shadow's own bubbly tears as the protagonist tries to grapple with what it means to feel unknown to your own self. Each obstacle dodged is a step closer to recovering their self-image and becoming the person they once knew themselves to be. Written in Pi Game by Wizard Inc., a team of high school freshmen and sophomores from the Baltimore Polytechnic Institute, 
Self, a lost image, follows up on themes and ideas explored in Wizard Inc.'s previous project for Code Day, File, a lost message, by continuing what's known internally as the Lost series. Enjoy this fast, frantic, and tightly controlled platformer, and learn what it means to truly accept yourself. Hi, my name is Veera Venigalla, and I'm one of the judges for Virtual Code Day. I'm a manager in T-Mobile, and here to present the winners of Teamwork Dreamwork Award. The judges really liked how the team of six worked together to learn a new language <clears throat> and build an awesome Mario style platformer game, especially during these pandemic times where everything is virtual. And for that reason, I'm presenting the Teamwork Dreamwork Award to Team Aquatic. Congratulations. Hey everyone. Uh, our team named Team Aquatic has made this game, platform game called Into the Mi Midnight Zone. So use the white joystick to move uh, left and right, press space to shoot projectiles to defeat the enemies. This water bottle my uh, one of my teammates has created. And then we also have implemented a coin system where every time you touch a coin, then you would get one coin. And yeah, uh, thanks for playing. Hi, my name is Lola Eggerman, and I was one of the judges for Virtual Code Day. I work for Code Day as program manager for handling our virtual events, and I'm very pleased to announce that we're giving the Warp Drive Award to a team of beginners who in just a weekend made a, an amazing game in Scratch. And for that reason, I would like to announce the Warp Drive Award goes to Team Space Action. Congratulations. My name's Ayush and my name's Isa. This is our very first Code Day project and we are making our game in Scratch. Our game is called Space Action. We will be now presenting it to you and hope you enjoy. This is level one in our game Space, in, uh, space Action. Now there are three rocks hurtling toward us. You have to dodge them and get to the pink arrow. When you do, you will finish level one. This is level two in our game, Space Action. As you can see, there's now an alien that shoots lasers at you. You can also shoot by pressing left click on your mouse or your keyboard. We will finish this level now. We are now in level 3 of our space action game. This is basically the same thing as level 2, but everything is much faster. So this is level 4, and it's harder because there are two aliens. If you destroy the first alien, then the second one can't shoot. Okay, this is level 5 and there's a boss that's shooting big lasers. So, you have to destroy the boss and get to the green flag without dying. Thanks for listening! Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Balachico, Senior Program Manager with T-Mobile. And I'm happy to announce Best in Class for Ground Word, a game with mesmerizing music, levels, and story, and the rotational worlds. Um, another job well done to this team.
Hey everyone, my name is Charlie and I'm the team support producer for Virtual Code Day. I'm here to present the winner for the Best in Class Game Award. The judges really like this specific project because of its fruit-based theme, its amazing graphics, and the dedication by its team members to build their first video game ever. So, without further ado, it is my honor and pleasure to announce the Best in Class Game Award, Fruit Basket 2. Hi everyone, Lola here again. I'm here to present the Best in Class App or Website Award. The judges were very impressed with how this team worked together as a large team of six and created a functioning, usable, and creative app. And for that reason, we are presenting Best in Class App or Website to Team Submarine Subscription Manager. Congratulations. We created a subscription manager application that we called Submarine. So you, uh, there's three input edit text views that you enter in the name of your subscription, how much it costs, and how often you want to be billed in days. And then adds it to this thing and sets a reminder that sends you a notification. However, for this demonstration, I changed the uh, notification to be in seconds rather than dates. As you can see, it popped up here it notifies you which application it is or which subscription it is and how much it will be billed for um we weren't able to get everything we wanted we were able to make a database and get everything hooked up to that so if i were to add another thing it would be added to this database and this uh we created we successfully created a database because if i were to close the application and reopen it all the data saves However, we will not able to set up the alarm manager to have multiple notifications for different subscriptions at once. So this Disney Plus subscription isn't sending a notification. But you can still manipulate the list and delete stuff, edit, and yeah, this is our subscription application. Hey everyone, Charlie here again. I'm now going to announce the Best in Class Website Award. The judges were really inspired by this project's super creative theme and focused around specific characters, and they were also really inspired by the amazing purpose of this project, to teach others a new language. So without further ado, it is my pleasure and honor to announce the Best in Class Website Award given to Cow Cow Learn. Hey everyone, I'm Melissa, and I built an interactive Korean language learning website using Kakao Friends as virtual tutors. 
So first you choose any tutor. I'm going to choose Ryan. And then you go on to learn. You just input your name. You see Ryan right here. Enter. And then you get like a brief history of the Korean alphabet through a slideshow. And then here are like the basic alphabet. And then here's like the chart. And there's also a drawing board with demonstrations. So for example, this is O. So this matches this. There are also um, other consonants, further vowels. Yep, this is just a chart. So now we move on to practice. So here the category is basic phrases and traveling. So you could just generate a random vocab and then here you have random phrases. And here you, you also have a vocab quiz. So 안녕하세요 means hello. If I submit this, the answer is correct. Let's generate another question. This means please take me to. So yeah, it's incorrect and it gives you the correct answer. So you could also um, experiment with other tutors. So for example, this is Frodo and Neo. And if you go to practice, the category is different. It's love and relationships. So this is about, you know, love and relationships. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You could explore other tutors and other themes, but this is pretty much the end of my presentation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rajesh Narayanan. I'm one of the judges for Virtual Code Day. I'm a technology solutions manager in T-Mobile with 25 plus years of software industry experience. I'm here to present the winners of the Best in Class Electronics Award. This award goes to three individuals, Alex, Jonathan, and Adam. Their uh, <clears throat> Rover Express project really aligned with the theme of Code Day. They put together this project from three different locations using Amazon Data Kinesis uh, for real-time communication. They, fill, uh, they build this package with creativity and finish. For this reason, I'm presenting the award for best in class electronics to the Rover Express. Hearty congratulations to the winners. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Adam Granito on the team Pioneers with Alex Fang and Jonathan Macias, and our project is the Rover Express. We built a sensor package that could be attached to a space rover. This rover calculates temperature, humidity, and air pressure data about the surrounding environment. Using this data, the rover then calculates the percent score to determine how habitable it is for humans. This data is then sent back to a ground station on Earth. The ground station monitors the rover and sends thresholds for how to calculate the percent score. To implement this, we utilize the internet as a communication protocol. We also use three DigiKey hardware kits, two of which served as sensor packages. These sensor packages would then be attached to the rovers as they explore the environment. The last DigiKey hardware kit served as the ground station. Each of the kits communicate with a Node.js application to send and receive data. Communication between the ground station and the rovers is done with, through Amazon Kinesis data streams. With that, here's the demonstration of our project. So as you can see, the received message was the humidity threshold of 150. And this should have been sent over serial communication to the Arduino board that is running it. And it will update its threshold parameters as part of the algorithm. And then the score, as you can see, can be affected by the threshold parameter. As you can see there, we had received humidity data from ground station one, the threshold of 110. This changes the threshold for calculating the habitability score. This is done by calculating a one to five score for the three fields that the uh, packet sensor package measures, temperature, humidity, and air pressure, which is then used to calculate a percent score. This is displayed on both the OLED display as well as sent back to the ground station, as you can see in the Visual Studio Code terminal. In addition, we also simulated a charging feature for the rover by set, shining a light onto the um, light sensor. You can see that it says rover charging and the LED pops up. 
And that concludes the tour of Rover One. Hey everyone, Charlie here again. Last but not least, I would love to present the Best in Class Electronics Award. For this project, the judges thought it was a particularly relevant topic given the recent events of the Mars rover landing, and they were really inspired by the creative use of the DigiKey Electronics Kit to accomplish this project. So, without further ado, it is my pleasure and honor to announce the Best in Class Electronics Award given to Team Red Planet, Blue Planet. Hello, here's a game I made using the DigiKey set. It walks you through a storyline that you get to interact with a little bit. Here's our friend. It's us. Thanks so much for watching. I had a lot of fun learning about electronics. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Balatico, Senior Program Manager with T-Mobile, and I'm happy to announce the Best in Show Award, which goes to Team Wormhole Astro Thingy. The judges really liked the use of theme into the unknown, as well as the procedural generation, which is not easy to do, um, as well as the sound and art. So congratulations and fantastic job to that team. And on behalf of T-Mobile, we wanna say that we're very impressed and amazed with all the efforts that happened this weekend in such a short time frame. We saw a lot of cool projects um, from wellness to games, to dealing with the epidemic, as well as time management. So you should be all proud of yourselves in regards to what you're able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. And as always, we wanna thank the Code crew for all that you did. Um, you rock and you're awesome. And then uh, special thanks to the T-Mobile volunteers, judges, and mentors who worked tirelessly over the weekend um, to make things happen. Um, and to all the teams that participated, um, continue to be curious, keep learning, and then find passion in whatever you choose to do. Um, and then until next time, keep creating and coding. Take care. All right, so for Virtual Code Day, we made a space 2D space explorer game. And it's kind of similar to a roadblock in that requires a bit of strategy. So as you can see, you play as this little space guy who has a gun and a jetpack to get around space. Um, and he has to shoot these little space monster things who are attacking him. And killing them gives you um, ammo and free fuel. And now there's like a health bar, an ammo bar, a fuel bar, and right now I'm being attacked by a bunch of these little monsters. The goal of the game is to basically get to the nearest portal. You can see that there's like a warp arrow telling you where that portal is, and pumping as many as you can. And you can see that I just used the uh, uh, nuke weapon, which basically acts sort of like a homing missile. And you can also see that there are uh, different types of tiles that are um, getting generated each time. So we basically coded in a script that procedurally generates these things, and they're not manual placed, they're like completely randomly generated. And we have around four different tile sets that can just be generated. And right now, that's just an example of the Merkle Hop. There's also a little mini map in the corner that uh, tells you where you are. and. There's also a little high score and just a regular portals hopped. The high score keeps track of your high score in between plays. And now you can see a bit of strategy to the game because um, my ammo is low, so I have to kind of figure out like uh, how these shots are gonna like be used most efficiently. So yeah, here are just some shots of the game. And yeah, 
So thank you so much to Virgil Coder for this opportunity. We had a lot of fun just collaborating and working on this game. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. Hi everyone. I'm one of the judges here for Code Day. I'm Ellen Azopi. I'm a senior manager here at uh, T-Mobile for product and technology. And I'm super excited today to present the award for best in show. All of the judges loved this submission, hands down. We loved the game. We loved that you went the extra mile with the packaging because it really conceptualized how it would look. And we really loved that you went the extra mile with that video. So I'm really happy to announce that the winner for best in show today was Pocket Frog. Congratulations, we all loved it. This is Pocket Frog, your new favorite game console powered by an Arduino. Let's take a deeper look inside. The basic animation is just two images drawn over an interval to make a simple two-frame animation. Start off by using the accelerometer, which helps move our frog left or right based on how much you tilt it on the accelerometer's y-axis. As you can see, he moves left and right however you want. Next, it is less than 15 degrees Celsius in this room, so the animation has changed to be a cold frog. I originally used the temperature and humidity sensor, but it was too slow, so I ended up using the accelerometer's temperature sensor. Next, this button press will cause the image to change to a happy frog. And this LED light will light up. Lastly is the sound sensor. If the sound goes over 500 decibels, the frog will change and the LED light will light up. And you'll get this! Fully functional and adorable Pocket Frog Council. In the future, I hope to incorporate the rotary sensor to change the speed the frog can move and such. Thank you so much DigiKey for providing these amazing kits to us, and thank you Code Day for giving me this opportunity. You can find the full code on GitHub. Thank you so much for watching! Hi there! My name is Tyler Menezes, and I'm the Executive Director of Code Day, and it is my pleasure to present the Audience Choice Award. Now, unlike a lot of, uh, a lot of the other awards and a lot of the judges, I can't say exactly what it was that we liked about this project, because it was chosen by the community. What I can say is that thousands and thousands of votes were cast, and this is the project that made its way to the top. So it is my pleasure to present to you the audience choice winner, Orbit Lab. Hello, I'm Dennis Schnicken, and I made the, the website Orbit Lab because the, the best way to appreciate the great unknown is to learn it, understand it, play with it, uh, feel it, I guess. So I made this website to help, and especially it should help with teaching now because labs are an important part of physics and anything really and it's hard to have them with coronavirus so this is an end body simulation a gravitational simulation um, it's meant to be very simple so for example here it has a nice simplistic uh, ui you can move objects you can give them a velocity you have a little vector uh, pointing in the direction of velocity you can add objects all that stuff for example here i have a already built simulation of two objects orbiting each other. For example, I can select and I can see how the velocity and everything changes and all that stuff, and I can see all the settings. And now the great thing about this is you can actually copy the link. Um, as you can see here, look, you can save data and copy the link, and all the data is saved in the URL. Same thing here. Uh, when you add, for example, an object, it automatically appends it to the URL. And when you when you transfer it, uh, change any settings, it also appends it to the URL. So if I copy it, I can open it again. And which it, 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 this is very convenient. For example, if you want to share it with students or you want to append it to your website, for example, um, so you can do that. And of course, it's also error proof if, if something is corrupt. Um, it, it doesn't crash, uh, everything else is completely fine and untouched. As you see, these objects are fine. So thank you for listening, and I do encourage you to play around. With it.